Lord. Breathe on us. Breathe on us tonight, Lord, your knowledge, your wisdom, Lord. Breathe on us tonight, Lord, that you will show us, Lord. Show us, show us new things tonight. Show us things that we didn't know. Show us things that will um, um, educate us, Lord. Show us things that will edify us, Lord. Let your scriptures open up our hearts and our minds. Let us leave this Bible study, you know, knowing that you've spoken to us, Lord, knowing that we've heard from your word in the mighty name of Jesus. So I'm really excited about tonight. Acts 7, as we've said, and we're going to go into Acts 7 right now. So um, let's go in because we've got quite a few scriptures to get to get into to get into. So let's be topic focus number one. As I said, you know, if it ain't on the scripture, save it for your other meetings because tonight we're studying Acts 7. Obviously, if scripture backs up scripture and you want to go back into scripture to come back into scripture and it lines up with the scripture, then yes. But if you're off topic and you're going off, there's 60 verses tonight and we need to get through them. So you need to be on point. So I'm speaking to you, Leon, your number one culprit. Yeah, so, uh, you, you have a number one culprit. It's not here tonight. Hallelujah. But we lift him up if he comes on. <laughs> and we're just going to go in tonight. I see that smile. So, yeah, we're going in tonight. So I'm excited. So, Gemma, are you, um, Gemma Emmanuel, are you going to read for us? Um, um, I can do. I can do. Can you read from verses one to eight, please? One to eight. Please. Then the high priest asked Stephen, are these charges true? To this he replied, brothers and fathers, listen to me. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham while he was still in Mesopotamia. Before he lived in Haran, leave your country and your people, God said, and go to the land I will show you. So he left the land of the Chaldeans and settled in Haran. After the death of his father, God sent him to this land where you are now living. He gave him no inheritance here, not even enough ground to set his foot on. But God promised him that he and his descendants after him would possess the land. Even though at the time Abraham had no child, God spoke to him in this way. For 400 years, your um, descendants will be strangers in the country, not their own, and they will be enslaved and mistreated. Wow. So we've got quite a lot going on in there, haven't we, really? So I want to give you an opportunity, because I always open up first. I want to give someone up an opportunity to come in and open up on those first eight scriptures. On those first eight scriptures. Go on, Leon, that's brave of you. Hallelujah. Go on, son. Fire away. Yeah, thank you, Gemma, for the reading. Yeah, uh, this, this, this is the call of Abraham. I mean, the first, the first verse where it speaks about the high priest he says that these things so, but he said, brethren, and my father's listen. He says to listen to my father. But also, this is like a voice that's been spoken out. He says to listen to my voice, but also, you know, the God of glory uh, to our father Abraham, you know. Abraham, God made a promise to Abraham, you know, and uh, that's the father's love right there in that place. But as, you know, he said to him, get out your country and from then relatives, and come to a land that I will show you. So it's like making a promise to the land. He's saying, I make a promise. This is this is the promised land. But also, as we go into that place, you know, he speaks about those that are in the wilderness, uh, you know, in the wilderness. And he said to lead them back into the promised lands. But he said, I will show you. So this is something that God is showing you. He's saying that I'll make a promise, that this is my promise that, you know, that to come to the land, but he said he will show you. But also he said he came out of the land, but also the world in there, but also the father was dead, but he moved to him and the land, which you know the world, like he's saying, come into that dwelling, that dwelling place with him, uh, with the father. 
Um, also, um, as this scripture moves on, you know, he it, it speaks about God gave him inheritance. He says about the inheritance, and that's okay, what he's okay, called but, us to but, do. But, but I want to ask you one question. Yeah. Yeah. And can I see your face on the screen? I can only see yeah, your face. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to ask you, you what, what is he speaking about? He's, he's speaking about the promise that he made. Okay, but where does the promise come from? God. Yeah, but... God made got, a promise to Abraham. It, where did he make it in? He made the promise to Abraham where? You need to be specific. Old Testament or New Testament? Old Testament. Thank you. It was Old Testament, he's Talking yeah. about the Old Testament. Do you understand Old what I'm Testament. trying to say? Yes. Then be specific. Gemma, over to you. Yeah, so... Um... We have to remember that obviously. Sorry about that, Gemma. Well done, Leon. But you missed out some fine details. Hey, well done. Well, Carry on, Gemma. That's the one I need to know. It's the Old Testament, yeah. That's. Yes. Thanks, Leon. That's cool. Okay. We got to remember, um, just for those like that don't remember the background of Acts and and stuff, or are still new to the Bible or learning, and and are really like may be thinking like what are they talking about like I, I know I've got a feeling there's someone on here who's probably like I don't have a clue what these people are talking about but <laughs> we have to remember so it says then the high priest said we have to this is probably he's probably talking about Carthus here oh, and this is um the person that um did the trial of Jesus oh, so we learned about that in the gospels before and a lot of the the small groups are going through the gospels and you'll come to get to know who Carthus is this is why really important that if you don't know the bible and stuff that you do attend these small groups it helps you get to know the characters the people the setting where things were going and it will lay it out so at this time they're probably talking it's it's probably talking about Carthus and he was the one that dealt with the 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 trial between Jesus. So the, at that time, it says, are these things so? And this is when Stephen had been invited by Carthus to explain himself. So there had been accusations that we spoke about last week in Acts 6, verses 11 to 14. So we spoke about that last week where Stephen was accused. He was accused of being blasphemous using words against Moses and against God and against um, the holy place, what is the temple, and against the law. So we, we now know in today's world that Jesus has come. So the law has been written. We've been written into a new covenant. So a new covenant means that the law, the however many 465 laws that we could never live up to, has been abolished, that we all fall short of the glory of God. So the grace, this is where Jesus comes in. And they accused him of saying that Jesus would destroy both the temple and customs delivered by Moses, right? So we, we this is all gone now. But in these times, at that point, there were still many, many people that believed in the law they believed in the holy temple they believed in moses they believed in moses covenant they believed a lot in the old testament and um so in his response stephen then come back and he was saying he was starting he, he wasn't interested in defending himself he just wanted to proclaim the tr truth about Jesus. And, and that's, that's the thing. Like sometimes we can get so caught up on telling everyone the truth and fighting our corner and being so caught up on it that sometimes we can forget to give glory to Jesus and Amen. we can get so caught up on it. Um, and then he goes on, he talks about Abraham he talks about the um, old covenant, and this is this is what um, he speaks about the promise of Abraham. 
and Amen. he speaks about how Abraham he didn't he didn't originally go straight to the promised land the promised land it wasn't necessary because it shows that God was greater and he explained how Stephen was falsely accused of speaking against the temple but Stephen wasn't defending he was simply explained so sometimes we can get caught up in that defending things and we need to be more like Stephen and give glory to Jesus it goes on to speak about um mesomotop I can't even say that word Mesomotonia. <laughs> yeah that's what the one vaccine Thanks. and <laughs> when he was there um basically but Stephen explained that Abraham did not immediately go to Canaan because he dwelt, it says in the scripture, he settled in Haran. And basically, um, that means he didn't immediately leave his relatives. So his father came with him to Haran. And it shows um, Abraham's obedience did not take God's promise away. It meant the promise was on hold until a Abraham was ready to do what the Lord said. So if he has given you a promise for your life, sometimes it doesn't mean that you, it's never going to come to pass. Sometimes it just gets put on hold for a time being. And the fulfillment of the promise didn't progress until Abraham left Haram and his father behind and went to the place God wanted to him and that's what really spoke to me the fact is sometimes we hold on to something and we don't take that leap of faith and we don't leave things of our past because God has something better for us amen mm. thank you Gemma so we're looking at that as beautiful that's really good Leon Gemma really opened it up great to see people stepping up you know you stepped up holy spirit led and you you, you broke it down you broke it down and i just want to go on about stephen because you know stephen here we're seeing as we go into this chapter he, he's the first martyr that ends up dying for the faith he wasn't one of the 12 so let's look at some of the qualities that stephen had one he was the first martyr true he was wise and he was a person of good report. So these are the qualities that we're looking at. Here. He was also a, a man who had high spiritual attainment. What that means is not only wise and upright in his dealings with all men, but he, uh, he also has wisdom and discretion in the affairs of his life. He's also been filled with the Holy Spirit. So he has a spiritual wisdom as well as a godly wisdom. He also does not allow uh, his, his martyred spirit does not allow him to lead a life of ease, ease and indolence. He is ready at the call of the church. His spirit kindles with the work being placed on a higher platform. He seems more of a spiritual want of men around him. He's also ready to put himself in danger to, 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 to preach the gospel. Cosmos, over to you, brother. Yeah, cheers, Ava. I just wanted to ask, what's the difference between spiritual wisdom and godly wisdom? Oh, it's a good question. A good question. So, so spiritual wisdom, it's, it's a, from, from what I understand, spiritual wisdom is when we're operating in the spirit. So, for instance, if I'm in a situation, I'm operating in the spirit because I'm being guided by the spirit. That's my understanding. Godly wisdom is when you, when you obviously, when God implants or, or interprets or indwells by giving you the gifts of the things that he wants you to do by utilising that spiritual discernment. So there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a fine line, but, it's, but from my understanding, it's spiritual wisdom is when you're actually using it. So basically what you've learned or what you've listened to, the best description of that is by being a hearer of the word and a doer of the word. So when you hear something, you do it. Spiritual wisdom. Godly wisdom is when it's been implanted on you, revealed to you, and you're acting upon it. Okay. 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 So we've got... Um, anybody else before I move on? That was a good question. 
Is that your hand up, Maxine? No, I put my hand up. Gemma, your hands up. Yeah, Gemma with a black screen. Yeah. But you know what I don't like, Sorry, I'm no. just on the train trying to get home, so I might be. Oh, um, yeah. Um, for me, you know, what stands out there is so important. I think, to, you know, once you study the word of God and know the word of God, if we're put in a position where, you know, we're not trying to show off and have theological arguments, but sometimes we might be put in a position where we need to just to speak the word of God with the truth, you know, truth and conviction that comes from the knowledge that we have and through the revelation that the Holy Spirit gives us. Um, so to me, it stands out that uh, Stephen, you know, he had that, he had that gift that he could speak confidently and boldly and didn't shrink back. Also, he was just reiterating the covenant that God made with Abraham. And um, like even Abraham, you know, he was one of the men known to have great faith, but even he didn't completely obey God's um, instruction. You know, to move straight to, hang on, what was that land? Uh, just pull up scripture. Um, uh, yeah, so God appeared to him right where he was at. So it just reiterate that you know, God meets us right where we're at. And when he gives us a promise, we may we may not see the fulfillment of, we're not, we won't necessarily see the fulfillment of that. Um, there might not be any evidence of that until we move in faith and we have to, you know, um, when Abraham moved in faith, even though he hadn't yet seen the evidence of the promised land and him bearing a child and inheriting um, this new land, but he wasn't completely obedient. So it was like he fulfilled half of the promise because he did move, but he moved to uh, Haran. So God never remove the promise from him so that just shows me god's patience that sometimes we're not always completely obedient we might step out but still not fulfill the full promise but god never took that promise away he still gave him an opportunity to continue to push on and fulfill that promise um and you know it talks about the the 400 years um where the descendant you know it says here hang on he gave them no inheritance here and there was a period wasn't there in the bible where for 400 years. I've lost you. The heavens were closed and, um, and then it started to lead the children out of, out, of his, out, of his, uh, out of Egypt. So yeah, it seemed to be that there's like repercussions of not stepping out completely in faith and obeying God in the first instance, but God is still gracious enough to fulfill his promise through you, even when, you know you hold back or you're fearful it seems like he's patient and he still will follow through with it it's just going to delay the process okay that's great that's fantastic he's faithful and he always fulfills his promise um but the, 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 does that mean um that we need to go through the hardship and the consequences because he always fulfills his promise No, uh, basically, if God said it, it will happen. But we need to have faith. He says that without faith, we cannot please God. But sometimes we want to see evidence that, you know, we want to see evidence that if we move in faith, you know, if God says it's going to happen, but we, it looks physically impossible. You know, like he said to Sarah, you will bear a child, but she knew her womb was barren. That takes great faith. You really have to believe in the character of God over factual evidence. Exactly. So, question. So, I don't know, what would, what would be striking in, in, in one of the things, in, in, let's bring it back to real life, you know, so, because we're talking about faith there, yeah? So, what is it that you think that God can't do in your life today? In my life? Yeah, I'm bringing it back to you. <laughs> well, <laughs> You know what mine is, like, ah! I want to believe, I want to believe wholeheartedly that God can completely uh, cure me of all mental, you know, mental health diagnosis, rather than just live, live with the symptoms being managed. I want to believe in my whole heart that he's desiring to heal me, um, but I just have to really believe that. Consider it done. Amen. <laughs> Consider it done. Amen. Maxine, you're next. <laughs> uh, 
You're muted. Sorry, Stephen is bringing the whole law from the Old Testament right from Abraham, then right up through Moses and um, Joseph and and the prophets. And then he said to um, skipping it. So he, he said all of the Old Testament to the Pharisees. So that's why. So he was a very educated man because he knew the whole the whole um, Bible, the Old Testament to the um, to the Pharisees. Amen. Amen. So let's look and, at let's look let's look at let's look at spiritual um, spiritual wisdom, spiritual work. So spiritual wisdom kindles with work. Yeah. So here we see Stephen being placed in a higher platform. He sees more of the spiritual wants of men around him that this um, um, breakdown says. And having received these gifts, he looks for wider opportunities for exercising them. How many of us got spiritual gifts? Raise your hand. Um, I don't know if I have any. Oh, see, there's a lack of faith there. We need to pray over that. One, two, three, four. Nobody else. I can't see. Well done, Costas. Well done, Char Char. Well done. Well done. We, you're back in. Moved into the faith. All of us. Every single one of us. Here's the thing here, right? Gemma said it. Gemma said it's about the faith. So, boom, we now need to move in, exercising spiritual wisdom and using it. So, you know, when you go out in your day tomorrow, you know, and you're, and you're in the spirit and you're saying to the spirit, use me, use it. Pray for that person. Step out. That's yeah. spiritual wisdom, exercising it. You see, exercising the spiritual wisdom. It's no good having the gifts if you don't use them. Mm. All right? That's the bottom line. We saw that in the talents. We saw that in the gospel of the talents. When he said, oh, you wicked, faithful servant, what did you do with your talent? You didn't use it. So we know yeah. what God thinks about us not using our gifts. So it's very important to understand we can't go around thinking ourselves as believers, especially when we're moving in a place from spiritual immaturity to spiritual maturity, we have to exercise the gift. It's okay when we're, you know, when we're just coming in and we're just, you know, we're just new to the faith, but we have to be, as Gemma says, in the word. We have to be with small groups. We have to get an understanding of a basis of the simple gospel, first and foremost, before we can grasp anything else. It says every soul won to Christ is a fuel to a flame of love. Every victory over Satan stirs him up to war more resolutely against the flame of love. That every victory over Satan, we, 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 need, to, we need to know failures do not daunt us. Failures should not daunt us. If at first we don't succeed, try again. Failures should not daunt us. If we take anything from this Bible study tonight, take away that. Failures should not daunt us. We need to understand that success cheers us on when we see our brothers and sisters in the faith stepping out. We want to be part of that. We want to be part of it. This is why it's good. What Gemma said, Bible groups, when we're, doing, when we're going out doing evangelism, when we're going out in the community, we're exercising our gifts. This Friday, we've got a prophetic night. This woman who's going to come, she's going to blow you away in the church, 7 p.m. She's going to tell you about prophetic gifting, about prophetic in the prophetic world. The fivefold ministry has to be in operation today, you know, and, and, and basically that, that side of the ministry is really, really important because in them times they used to look to the apostles and those people to tell them now God has given us the gifts in the name of Jesus so that we need to know that nothing that nothing seems impossible with Christ on our side nothing is impossible nothing that Gemma's healing she wants feeling for nothing is impossible nothing you know um, um, um Maxine's uh, Maxine's son nothing is, is, is impossible for, for, for our God nothing Nothing. And we must think like that. The problem is, is that when we don't get what we want, particularly us addicts with us ad ad addictive personalities, we want it now. You know, it ain't going to happen in our time, but we must stay in the faith, just like Sarah. We must stay in the faith and in the belief that God is going to do it for me. 
God is going to do it for me. It's going to happen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Everything must be attempted, which may snatch the prey from the destroyer and enlarge the kingdom of light. We need to be snatching from the destroyer with our gifts. Amen. We need to be praying over people. We need to be attacking the realm with our gifting, our prayer, our prophetic, our healing. We've got it in us. God has given us us. We are believers. He gives us the promise of his Holy Spirit, which every one of us has got. But we need to exercise it. We are the light of the world. It's really important that we go in there. And you'll see as we go into this, as we go into this chapter, as we move on, as Gemma moves on, it talks about, um, blah, 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 blah. he is talking about Carthus, which is brilliant what Gemma said. And what we need to look at is Stephen's response does not seem to answer the high priest's question. He gave a masterful, detailed offence of the Christian faith. So this is what we need to do. When we're stepping out and people are asking us, we need to talk about the Christian faith, the simple gospel, what Christ did for us, the resurrection power, what he's done in our life, what he's done, where he's taken us from, from active addiction, from prisons, from jails, from institutions, from on the brink of death. Do you know what I mean? That's what Christ has done for me. You know, that's easy to tell someone about. But he gives them a detailed offense, a, de a detailed defense of the Christian faith from the Old Testament. Why he's doing that is to let them know, is to let them know it was them who concluded and condemned the Jewish leaders for je rejecting Jesus. He knows who he's talking to. He knows he's talking to the high priest Carvers, and he's telling him in his own language, in his own way, for his own book, that you rejected Jesus. So you can imagine, Carthus is fuming anyway. He's for, I've just got rid of Jesus and all that lot. And all of a sudden, you've got everyone full of acts, full of the Holy Spirit, going around preaching the gospel. So he's traumatized. Now he's got this Stephen in front of him, full of the Holy Spirit. And he's giving it to him in his Jewish language, in his book, telling him from the Old Testament, it was you who didn't listen. It was you who rejected Jesus. It was you. He's thinking, what is going on? You can imagine what he's thinking. See, he says, a title used only here, if we go to Psalms 29.3, God's glory is, is, God's glory is the sun here. It's what it's about. It's, this is all about God's glory. And it talks about Abraham, the Mesotopia, before he lived in Haram. He talks about in Genesis. He's quoting from the Old Testament. He's quoting from the land of the chief. So there's no way that this Jewish leader can deny what he's talking about because he's telling him about his own history. He's telling him about his own book. So you can imagine what's going on. He's furious. So when we look at um, when he goes in, he's quoting back from Genesis over 100 years. He's talking about the, and it goes in in verse 8. He's talking about the convert of the circumcision. He's talking about the Leviticus laws, as, as, as Gemma said. So let's move on. And before we go on, we will come back to that and give it more fruit. So let's just carry on. So, and the patriots, this is what he says. We're in verse nine. Pick up your Bibles. Let's go. And the patriots, jealous of Joseph, sold him. He's telling them. And they sold him into Egypt. But God was with him. God was with him. And he rescued him out of the affliction and gave him favor and wisdom before Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. He's talking about the plagues now. He's talking about what happened to Pharaoh. So if we know about Pharaoh, we should be, we should be known that he's talking about Pharaoh being hard hearted. What happened, what he did, the persecution that went on through there and who made him rule over Egypt and all of the household. And then came the famine throughout all Egypt and Canaan. And then there was this great affliction and our fathers could not find no food. But when Jacob heard there was grain in Egypt, he sent out his father to the first visit. And the second visit, Joseph made himself known to the brothers. And Joseph's family became known to Pharaoh. And Joseph sent and summoned Jacob back to the father and his kindred spirit and 75 persons in all. And Jacob went down into Egypt and he died. And our fathers were there and they carried him back to Sheshem. And they laid out the tomb for Adrian that brought back the sum of silver from the sons of Ham Hammer in Shechem. But in that time of promise, Drew near which God had granted to Abraham, the people increased and multiplied in Egypt. So we're talking about a fellowship growing and multiplying in Egypt until there arose over Egypt another king who did not know Joseph. 
he dealt shrewdly with our race and forced our fathers to expose their infants so that they would not be kept alive. At this time, Moses was born and he was beautiful in God's sight. We all know about the story of Moses. It is beautiful in God's sight. And he brought, up, he, he brought up the three months in his father's house. And when he exposed Pharaoh's daughter, adopted him and brought him up as her own son. And Moses was instructed in all wisdom of the Egyptians as he was mighty in the words of deeds. I'm going to stop there. So we're up to Moses right, right now. So if you've been following your book in the Old Testament, you would have known some of these stories, particularly you know, the Moses story, which I always remember watching that as a child, you know, when they put the baby in the, in the, in the lake and you see the baby go around and you think, well, what's going to happen to this baby? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And you, you end up seeing it end up in, um, this woman finds him and he ends up being brought up in a palace and he ends up, in, we know, we should know the story. And then it goes from there, but we see what's going on. He's telling them, he's telling them, Gemma, over to you. Your hand was up. Okay. We'll go on to Maxine. It was you. You're muted, Maxine. Right. You know, you know, you're talking about the film of Moses. That was um Charlton Heston. That's the one. And then when they when they it was his sister put Moses in the basket in the in the in the Nile, and there was crocodiles in that river. Mm. So you can imagine, and his sister followed the basket all the way up the river till it got to the palace and she watched um i think it was pharaoh's sister pick the baby up and she didn't have any children so it was beautiful because it was a blessing for her but you know god god bless moses didn't he because Amen. he was he had a blessed life but he was brought up as um not as Egyptian, as Jewish. That's right. Well, we so had that, remember that heritage. ring. Yeah, <laughs> he knew his heritage, huh? Yeah, he had that ring, Jewish heritage. So when we look at Moses, there's four parts of his life. So Moses' life may be divided into three 40-year periods. The first 40 years encompassed his birth and his life with Pharaoh. The second, his exile in Midian, obviously when he murdered the guy and he had to you know, run away and he was in exile for another 40 years. And then the third bit revolved around the events in Exodus where he spent in the time in Israel's wilderness wandering. So Leon, your hands up. Is, is that... Yeah, so from, from the, uh, the Old Testament, as, as we're speaking, uh, you know, we're really speaking about the um, rejection also when they rejected Jesus, uh, you know, he says about you know, God's presence. Leon, where are you? Where are you in these scriptures? I'm in scriptures 1 to 22. Where are you specifically on these scriptures? Uh, oh, the nine. Old Testament's a very, very big book. Chapter <laughs> 9, from, from, from uh, when, when... And he the said, patriots, uh, jealous of Joseph, sold him into Egypt. Is that what you're talking about? You know, what I was talking about is that, you know... When he was speaking I need about you to be rejection. specific on these scriptures. Yeah, no, I've got uh, chapter uh, 7, verse 9. Verse 9. And the patriots, jealous of Joseph, sold him into Egypt, but God was with him. What do you want to comment on that? And that's what I'm saying. Is God's presence was in that situation right there and then. God was what with we, him. What I was saying is about, you know, Stephen's speech. You know, he said that God was with him. Hmm. It's God's presence, isn't it? Mm. But you know, God can bless the outside, but the promised land. That's what I just get from the uh, the scripture itself. But did we read on uh, verse ten? We did read on verse ten, but and yeah. rescued him out of the affliction. So he said that they were not able to resist the wisdom, but and the spirit by which he spoke. You know, is what he was. What he spoke, like he spoke that, didn't he? Amen. So that's what we're saying. He had to have wisdom to speak that. As God's that, that, that wisdom comes from God, doesn't it? Amen. Amen. Yeah. So, yes, so we're talking about Stephen's speech here. First yeah. line, he's talking about uh, he goes back into the, the you, you know what God was doing in the old yeah. testament. He said that God yeah. was with these people and he rescued them. How many of us know that Rescue. we've been rescued by God today? 
Say that again. Sorry, Pastor. How, how many of us know in our hearts and in our minds that we've been Amen. rescued by God today? I have. Jesus saves. Yes. I have. He's, he's saved. saved. He's rescued us. Amen. 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 That's safe. All my life. Anyway, so I've got Maxine. You give Amen. me a wave. I've got Costas. You give me a wave. I've got Gemma. You give me a wave. I've got Leon. Yes. You give me a wave. I've got Gemma. You give me a wave. I've got anybody else been rescued by Jesus? Yes. I've got Malcolm. Yeah. You give me a wave. Fauzi, what about you? Up you in France, eh? Fauzia, where are you? <laughs> Amy, what about you, sister? How are you doing? Emma, how are you? Dude, I'm struggling, guys. Really, really struggling. What's happening, Emma? <clears throat> I'm just um, really not in a good place at the moment. I'm really suffering from a lot of depression. Um, oh. I'm finding all this really overwhelming. I'm really, really, you know, I feel like I'm just getting attacked by everything, like through my kids and I don't want to take my eyes off God and I'm trying my hardest to push through, but my head is just separating me. Um, yeah, I just, I'm struggling so badly. Amen. We really around wonderful. my recovery. I'm scared that I'm going to relapse. I'm just, I'm just really, really not in a good place, but, um, you know, I didn't want to come on this meeting tonight and I knew it was because I just wanted to sit and feel sorry for myself and, um, I'm exhausted as well, but I knew it was the right thing to do. So Amen. I pushed myself to get on, get on here. And um, I'm going through something at the moment, like a relationship. And um, I loved what Gemma said about like, And I've loved, I'm glad that I come on here because so many things have been said tonight that it's just, you know, it gives me that little bit of faith. Do you know what I mean? Like keep pushing Emma, keep pushing. And Gemma said that, you know, some, we have to let go of things and take that leap of faith for God to put better things in our path, right? And that is something that I'm not doing. I'm not, I'm sitting in all this pain because I'm not willing to let go because I've got fear of let go in because all my defects are control and all that lot. The only one suffering is me. Like, because I won't, if I just let go, trust God, have that leap of faith, I, I know in my heart he will provide for me. But I'm just so... I just, just, I just can't seem to do it. I'm so consumed on all this. Like, yeah. I'm just finding it so difficult. And it's like, I've been sat on here and like, I, you know, and then Gemma said as well, like, there's people, and I love what she said, there's people on here that are not going to know what we're talking about. And that was me. I don't know what you're talking about. I want to listen. I want to learn the word. You know, I am a baby. And it's so frustrating because, I'm an addict and I want more and more. I want to know. I want to know now. I want to know everything, you know, and I don't. And I'll beat myself up for that because I think I should be where you are, Ivor. I Amen. think that I should be taking it. Amen. You know, I should, but I don't. I don't. Amen. And I've got to stop giving myself such a hard time. And do you know what? Just keep doing what I'm doing. Keep getting in that Bible and just, just keep coming on these meetings and, you know, keep praying. That's all I got. But I just, 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 the struggle is unreal. But, you know, I'm a fighter. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give up. Do you know what I mean? I've got, I've got, I've got a lot to lose. Um, yeah. So. Amen. I'm really glad that you stepped out in faith. Man. That was, the, this, the, that was, that was beautiful. That was the Holy Spirit, you know, just really coming in. Do you know what I mean? Wanted to speak to someone tonight. And it's spoke yeah. to you. So we lift you up. Let's just pray for Emma right now. Let's just let's just cover Emma in prayer right now. And ladies, I want you all to reach out to Emma at some point tomorrow. That's Maxine, Gemma, Gemma, and uh, Shah, yeah, Fauzia. You know, you've got a couple of women's groups that are going on tomorrow. Um, you know, 2.30 and 8 p.m. You know, get make use of those groups, as Gemma said. Do you know what I mean? Let's let's just let's, let's cover, let's just cover Emma. She's just been baptized. It, it, you know, it, 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 I don't want to say it's no surprise, but you've just been baptized and you, you, there's a battle going on for the spirit between the spirit and the flesh. You know, you know, the, the, the devil wants to claim you back. He doesn't like yeah. what you've done. He wants to claim you back. But we're yeah. going to cover you tonight. We're going to cover you tonight and you're going to see a shift from the spirit because we're going to move in faith. 
you know, and I, and I hope the girls don't let you down and they all call you tomorrow. And, you, you know, and I hope you can get into those groups tomorrow and, um, you know, you know, and continue on your journey this week because we want to fellowship with you. We want to lift you up. We want to give you whatever you need on this platform. Do you know what I mean? If it's prayer every day you need, we're here for you. If you want us to cover you every day, we're here for you. If you want us to go through, you know, some 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 basic Bible study with you, we're here for you. Whatever you need, you know, we're here. So don't miss out. Let's just cover you. Father God, we thank you. This evening in the mighty name of Jesus, we just lift up Emma right now, Lord. But Lord, that no weapon formed against her shall prosper, Lord. Lord, she, you, you know, she just cried out to her brothers and sisters and to you, Lord, of the things, the things, the things that are happening in her life, the, the battles, the struggles, we just lift them up right now to you, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that, that Emma has stepped forward in her faith tonight. That she's, you know, the, the spirit has just prompted her out of that isolation, you know, out of that place of, you know, that the, the, I'm going to keep it to myself. No, it's been exposed, Lord. The darkness has been exposed into the light right now. So, Father, we just pray that we, we continue to, 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 re, to, to remain Emma in the light right now. As those candles are shining bright, Lord, we just lift up ever, Lord, the light to the left, to the right, in the mighty name of Jesus. We just cover her right now with the blood of the Lamb, Lord, over her, Lord, from the from from her feet right the way up to her head right now, Lord. Cover her with the blood, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. We just lift her up today. We just thank you. Today is a day that you should make that she shall rejoice in this suffering because this is you, this is you, Lord, lifting her up, Lord, that no weapon formed against her shall prosper. We just we just lift up her circumstances to you. Lord, we pray that she can continue that letting go process, Lord. The Lord that she's talked about, that struggle, that struggle of trusting you, Lord, trusting you with all her heart. Lead not on your own understanding. The word of God says, Father God, we pray to Today, Lord, as we lift her up today, Lord Jesus Christ, that you are with her, Lord, that you know that you're in the furnace with her. As that scripture says, as that scripture says in verse eight, it's in, in verse nine, it says that God was with him, that God is with you right now, that God is with you, Emma, right now in the mighty name of Jesus. He will never leave you and forsake you. And if we go into verse 10, it says, and rescued you out of all of afflictions. He's going to rescue you in faith, as Gemma Hill said. Lord, we pray that the faith, Lord, the faith will increase tonight. Lord, from the word of the scriptures, Lord, increase faith tonight that you are in the furnace with her, Lord, that she will trust in you, Lord. Whatever that situation is, that, that situation, let go right now, Lord. Let it go. Break, right, break, break, Lord. Break off. Break off, Lord. Break off right now. Break in the name of Jesus. Break that tie right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we break it. Break it. Break it right now. Break it in the name of your son. Power in the name of Jesus. Break it. Let loose. Let loose. Let loose right now. Loose, loose, loose right now in the name of Jesus. Power of the Holy Ghost. Power, we lift her up to you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. We come to you today. We come to you today, Lord, that you are with us. Father, Lord, the, Father, we just pray. Oh, we, just, we just lift it up. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Cover it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Pray. In the name of Jesus. Pray. Father God. 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 Break it. Break it. Break it. Holy Ghost fire right now. Shake. Cut up our skin. Shake it down. Shake it down. Shake it down. Shake it down right now. Lord, there will be no great affliction no more. Release right now. Release. In the name of Jesus. Release. 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 Power in the name of Jesus, Lord, move right now. Holy Spirit, move. Holy Spirit, move in the name of Jesus. Touch him right now. Let go. The fight, the fight is over. The battle is over. Let go. 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 I will show you. I will move you to the next level. I will move you to the next step. But trust in me right now in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. Lord, the power come upon her right now. Holy Spirit, come upon her. Holy Spirit, release any burdens on her right now. Release her. Release. Release. 
in the flame of the fire of bush when Moses saw it, it was amazing his sight and he drew because they love Moses they love Moses they love Abraham but they don't like Jesus hallelujah what's wrong with these people <laughs> do, you know, do you know what I mean <laughs> sometimes when you look at it you just think what is wrong what is wrong I love Moses I love Abraham do you know what I mean? I love Jacob, but I love Jesus, bro, as well. Come on. Do you know what I mean? It's like, how can you just reject Jesus? When you really think about it, it's quite insane. You know, when we look at insanity, we look at our own form of insanity. But from a Jewish perspective, this is insane. Seriously. It's really kind of, I mean, it's, it, it, when you look at it from another perspective, when we talk about hard-heartedness, Right, that even the fact that they read the book today, Isaiah 66, which, which is it, Gemma, Isaiah 66, and it, the resurrection power is not in there in their book today. Still don't believe it. I mean, that's like talk about hard hearted. So, uh, um, Ivor, if they read Isaiah 53, then it's Jesus is in there, they've taken it out. No, no, but isn't it? Is are oh, they taking out the Torah? They're taking out their book, yes. Oh, yes. I didn't know that. Oh. Mm. It's mental. It's quite yeah. sad when you think about it, isn't it? Really, when you think about it, because that's hard hearted. It's like mm. saying, it's like what you say to people. No? You say to people today, it, uh, salvation is real. What about life beyond eternity? Well, I don't believe in that. And you're given all the sorts of explanations. Da, 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 da. No, no, no. I'm just going to go to my grave and I'm going to be all right. And you're trying to like really try to like, you know, have a word in the conversation. It ain't going to go nowhere. Hard hearted. Mm. Think about on us when people were telling us, stop using, stop doing the things you're doing. Hard hearted. I remember one day I was having a conversation with, with my dad and, 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 and and my sister, and they were spirit-filled Christians, right? Spirit-filled Christians at the time. I think it was about 17 or 18 years ago. And they, the, and they, and they, was, you know, they were deep in the faith at them times. And I was having a conversation with them. And one day I was having a conversation with them, and, and, and they were started whispering, do you know what I mean? And I thought, what are you two whispering about? Do you know what I mean? And I overheard, and they said something to me. They said, oh. it's like they was really disappointed. This conversation that was having, it was kind of like, I was all quite there, but it's not quite there in the heart. It's a heart problem. They were going about, and I overheard them. That was about 18 odd years ago. Do you know what I mean? It was like, and it really affected me because of, when I had to look at it, I had to understand really what that was. And it took me all those years to understand. Like Gemma said, it takes all those years for God to do it. God will do it in the end. God will do it. But I've got to look at all the pain, all the consequences, all the Egypt. They're all going through the Egypt, the 40 years, the journey that should have took five days took 40 years. Mm. That's painful. But yeah, God does it in the end. But it's still painful. Mm. There's a suffering that comes with it. So when we look at this, when we look at, he was amazed at the sight as he drew near to look. And there came the Lord. He talks about the God of the Father, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. Moses trembled. He did not dare look. Then the Lord said to him, take off the sandals from your feet. He's talking, we all know about this in the Burning book in Moses. And I've surely given you affliction to the people. This Moses, whom they rejected. This Moses. So they rejected Moses, saying, who made you ruler and judge? This man God sent as both ruler and redeemer by the hand of the angel who appeared to him in the bush. This man led them out of performing wonders and signs in Egypt and the Red Sea in the wilderness. For 40 years, this is the Moses who said to the Israelites, God will raise you up. I'm saying to each and one of you tonight, God will raise you up. Amen. God will raise you up, Maxine. God will raise you up, oh. Gemma, Fosia. God will raise you up, Emma. God will raise you up, Amy, Char. God will raise you up, Costas. God will raise you up, Leon. God will raise you up, Gemma, Malcolm. God will raise you up. This is the one who was in the congregation in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him in the Mount Sinai with our fathers. He received living oracles to give to us. He received living oracles to give to us. God is giving us living oracles today for non-believers. 
He's given us by his spirit. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, sir. By his spirit. As Amen. for Moses, who led us out of the land of Egypt, as for God, as for Jesus, who led you out of the land of Egypt, who led you out of the land of Egypt, Leon, who led you out of the land of Egypt, Gemma, who led you out of the land of Egypt, Costas, who led you out of the land of Egypt, Emma, who led you out of the land of Egypt, Malcolm, as for God, who led you out of the land of Egypt, Maxine, as for God, Jesus, today, still leading these people. And they made a calf in there. What did they do? They went back and sac they went back and sacrificed. They went back and made a calf. It's like me getting clean. God give me his spirit. I'm full of the Holy Spirit. And then I go back and I start worshipping a crack pipe again. It's the same mm. thing. And I say, I'll go back and I start drinking alcohol again. And I go back and I start worshipping music, money, power, mm. property, prestige, whatever you want to do. This is it here. And they made a calf in those days and offered the sacrifice to the idol and they went back rejoicing it in the works of their hands. But God turned away and gave them over to worship the host of heaven as it is written in the book of prophets. Did you bring me to slain beasts and sacrifice? During the 40 years in the wilderness, they suffered for 40 years. O house of Israel, you took up the tent of Moloch and the stars of your God Rephim and the images that you made to worship, and I will send you into exile beyond Babylon. Right. Yeah, we love grace. But there's consequences. Exile. Some of our exiles is prison. Some of our exiles is institutions. If we're lucky, we might get an exile in a rehab. Mm. If we're lucky. I'm talking those that are coming from active addiction. Hmm. 7.43. I want us to just stop there for a minute. George Norman. I'll call you back. So we're looking at now. Verse 44. Do you want to read on? Gemma? Gemma Hill. Gemma Hill. Yes. yes. Read on from first take 42. Go from 42 right the way through to 53. Okay. I'm reading from New Living Translation. <laughs> then God turned away from them and abandoned them to serve the stars of heaven as their gods. It's astrology, isn't it? Mm -hmm. In the book of the prophets, it is written... Was it to me you were bringing sacrifices and offerings during those 40 years in the wilderness, Israel? No, you carried your pagan gods, the shrine of Molech, the star of your god, Rephan, and the images you made to worship them. Stop there so a minute, I'm Jim. Stop there a minute, Jim. Right, so listen. Us believers must be careful. Once we start worshipping in our faith, we've got to be careful where we put ourselves in other places. We are believers. I know some of us, you know, I would never say anyone to stop going to meetings, but we must know when we go into meetings, we're going into a different realm and we need to put our armor on. We need to. And that means where we go into any other places. Do you know what I mean? I was in, I was in a, a, a calf the other day and there was something strange about this calf. It's only down the road. I've, I've, you know, I've, I've done business with these people and everything. But my spirit was in there today. And I, and I asked for a cup of coffee. And first of all, um, you, you know, I, I get funny about certain things, especially when I say when I ask for a cup of coffee and the guy says, um, yeah, can you pay? I, I, whilst I'm sitting down at the table. So I actually said to him, because he didn't know me, and he didn't know that I'd done business with his mum and dad, but I thought it was a bit cheeky. 
to, to ask me to pay up front. So I said, um, yeah, I'll pay after I've had the coffee. So anyway, he served me the coffee. It was nice. And then his mum comes back in and he's like, oh, hello. So his face like changed a bit. Do you know what I mean? Because he's, he, he didn't know that I knew his mum. But I, you know, I thought, you, you, yeah. But then I'm, I'm talking to the mum, but then my spirits, don't, I thought, why am I sitting there anyway? Do you know what I mean? Why am I in this place? But then I get talking to his mum and like, and she's talking about the calf and she's talking about, she's doing spiritual nights in there. And they're doing like, my spirit's just like tapping and they're doing like um, some mystic Meg in there. You know, it's a local cafe in the evenings, you know what I mean? Just to make more money, do you know what I mean? So, so I said, what are these spiritual nights? What are they then? Do you know what I mean? She's going, well, we come in there and we talk about, you know, a bit like, you know, uh, what we're going to do with fortune telling. We have about four or five of them in there and I'm like that. I'm, still, I'm twitching in there, do you know what I mean? I'm thinking, oh. <laughs> so, but I ain't saying that. I'm just like, thinking, oh, right, really interesting. But my, my, my mind's just going, this place needs to, you need to pray over this place. But she weren't ready for that. Do you know what I mean? So, so I said, what other nights you doing there? So, so I said, have you thought about doing any healing nights? And she said, what's that then? I said, healing? Yeah. She said, yeah, I'm open to do anything. So they buy food. I said, all right, we come talk about that. Because <laughs> I need to pray over that, Kath. The Holy Spirit said, ask her. <laughs> I need to pray over it because there's a local Kath. Do you know what I mean? So it's a local bit. So I've got to get myself in there. I've got to get, yeah, when I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded by lots of things. I go into places now and I need to be aware of what I'm walking into. I've got a lot of um, Turkish customers. And I, every time I go in there, they offer me their Turkish tea. Before, I'd have no, no, no qualms in saying, I'll have, a, I'll have a sip. Nah, I don't even touch it no more. Do you know what I mean? I had one the other day and the guy brought it for me. I insisted, said no, and he still brought it. So I looked at it and I thought, nah, because every time I, I looked at it and I saw that, that evil eye looking at me, do you know what I mean? I thought, oh, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So I thought, yeah, you got to be careful. My spirit will tell me where I've got to be careful. You know, we've all got to work. We've all got to go into certain places, but we've got to be mindful what we're walking into. We've got to be mindful. Any questions, any comment before I go, go before I move, move on to Gemma reading? Leon. Go on, Gemma, carry on. Okay, uh, so I was down to, uh, okay, I think I'm, yeah. Um, so I will send you into exile as far away as Babylon. Our ancestors carried the tabernacle with them through the wilderness. It was constructed according to the plan God had shown to Moses. Years later, when jo Joshua led our ancestors in battle against the nations that God drove out of the land, the tabernacle was taken with them into their new territory. And it stayed there until the name, until the time of King David. David found favour with God and asked for the privilege of building a permanent temple for the God of Jacob but it was Solomon who actually built it. However, the Most High doesn't live in temples made by human hands. As the prophet says, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Can you build me a temple as good as that? Asked the Lord. Could you build me such a resting place? Didn't my hands make both heavens and earth? Amen. You stubborn. Sure. You stubborn people. You are heathen at heart and deaf to the truth. Must you forever resist the Holy Spirit? That's what your ancestors did, and so do you. Name one prophet your ancestors didn't persecute. They even killed the ones who predicted the coming of the righteous one, the Messiah, whom you betrayed and murdered. You deliberately disobeyed God's law, even though you received it from the hands of angels. The Jewish leaders were infuriated by Stephen's accusation and they shook their fists at him in rage. But Stephen, full of, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed steadily into heaven and saw the glory of God. And he saw Jesus standing in the place of honour at God's right hand. And he told them, look, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing in the place of honour at God's right hand. Then they put their hands over their ears and began shouting. They rushed at him and dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. His accusers took off their coats and laid them at the feet of a young man named Saul. 
as they stoned him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. It fell to, he, he fell to his knees shouting, Lord, don't charge them with this sin. And with that, he died. Amen. So let's look at this. Let's, let's, let's rewrap this up. So Abraham, so first of all, in verses one to eight, he, was, he, 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 he tells him about Abraham responding to the promise of God. Challenges him in them verses. Then in verses 9 to 16, he talks about how Joseph was envied, then glorified. He goes on to talk about the story of Joseph, who was a great grandson of Abraham. He talks about his 10 brothers, and he talks about how one of them was sold into slavery. So he goes into that story. Then he goes on from 17 to 43 to recap. He talks about Moses, who was first rejected and became the leader of Israel, as we touched on. Stephen then reminds them of the very words of Moses himself in verse, seven, verse 37, spoken long before the promising people of Israel of God. Someone would read that. Verse 37. Uh, going back to verse 37, it says, Moses himself told the people of Israel, God will raise, raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. Moses was with our ancestors, the assembly of God's people in the wilderness, when the angel spoke to him at Mount Sinai, and there Moses received life-giving words to pass on to us. Okay, also go to John 1.17. John 1.17 says, For the law was given through Moses, but God's unfailing love and faithfulness came through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So do you see, do you see where it catapults? The law was given to Moses. And we go into verse 37 here in, in, in Acts. And it talks about how it comes through to Jesus. And they were still resisting him. Even in the wilderness journey from Egypt to Canaan, when God was leading the people with a pillar of fire, they turned from him and they worshipped the idols. It said they worshipped the calf. The heart of man is always the same. Men have always rejected God and refused the blessing he wants to give. Are you one of those who have accepted Christ? This is the question we want to ask you tonight. Are you one of those people that have accepted Christ? That have accepted Christ and the blessings he has to offer thank you jesus are you one of those people it's a question accepted christ this is what this scripture is asking us the heart of man is always the same the men have rejected god and refused the blessings some of us are refusing the blessings because we don't want to be obedient to the word of God today. Some of us are refusing the blessings because we want to lean on our own understanding. Are you one? I know for certainly my, my gripe today sometimes, if I had one, is that I wish, I wish I'd accepted and accepted it a lot earlier in my life and not rejected it. I wish I never turned back. Sometimes I have to look at it, you know, and I don't have any regrets, but I just wish sometimes my life was a bit more straightforward. I wish that I didn't complicate things. I wish that I'd, I'd, I'd have, you know, you know, that obedience in me that, that sometimes I see that I, I, I'm lacking. Certainly my, 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 my step work will tell me. It tells me the truth. And listen, yeah, hey, I'm, 50, I'm 53 years of age. I'll be 54. 54. I want to enjoy the latter days of my life. I want to see my girls growing up. I want to see, you know, the blessings of God upon me for the latter days of my life. I'm 53 years of age. I ain't got no more time to be leaning on my own understanding. Those girls need me. My wife needs me. 
My God needs me. My church needs me. My family need me. My community need me. So when I think that when I when I get the, the tempter of the world, because it will still try and tempt me, because I didn't come in there brimming with I want to be, you know, a minister of the gospel. That was not my desire. That was God's desire. So when we look at this scripture. We must ask ourselves that question. Have we accepted Christ and the blessings he has to offer for us? His ways are better than ours. I can assure you that. And he goes on in verses 44 to 53. He said the Jews had accused Stephen of saying that their wonderful temple would be destroyed. But he shows now that even the temple was not really according to God's will. It wasn't. Then he plainly declares in verse 51 that they have always resisted God's Holy Spirit. Imagine that. Imagine that. Getting to, you, you know, getting to the Father and he's he says, well, you've always resisted my Holy Spirit that I put in you. You didn't operate in those gifts that I gave you. You chose to do your own thing. Do you want to hear that? Because I don't. I'm going in. Going in. That they always resisted God's Holy Spirit. We know God is graceful. We know God is love. But do we want to really get this to the end and go, oh, I was trying to tell you this. I was trying to tell you that. I put such and such in front of you. I put such and such in front of you, but you would not listen. You rejected me. You rejected my words. You rejected what I read. Their fathers had killed the prophets whom God had sent. And now they killed the son of God. He's telling them. Imagine what they must be feeling. They must be wanting to kill him. I'm surprised they still let him speak at this point. Particularly that Carthus. We must admire Stephen's bravery. And this is what I want us to look at here. We've got to be brave. Like Stephen. If we say that we are Christians full of the Holy Spirit, that's what we are, aren't we? And we need to be brave. We can't be going, I'm full of the Spirit, I know the Spirit's in me, yeke, sheke, de. and we can't even tell the gospel to someone. We get into an NA meeting, and then we go, oh, we can't talk about Jesus in there. Can you imagine that? Stephen, he's in the synagogue, he's in the San Andrew. They're ready to, ki they're ready to kill him. Speaking before the men, he knew that they had power to kill him. So Stephen is speaking to these people that he knew that they'd have power to kill him, but he carried on. He carried on preaching. If God permits it, but he hoped some of them anyway would realize their terrible guilt. In the hope, he hoped. And the cry of God for forgiveness. That's what he's hoping. Even though he knows he's going to get killed or could be killed at any point, he's hoping, he's not thinking about himself, he's hoping that one of these people will be convicted by the Spirit and will come to Christ and ask for forgiveness. And that probably may have happened, who knows? This is necessary as people who do not realise 
that they are sinners. This is our job to speak to non-believers. They don't realize they're sinners. They're in the world. The world's doing everything that they do. So why they why would they think they're sinners? They think it's funny. They think it's laughable. We've all been there. We think it's great. Ah! We think it's fun. Come on. I'm not speaking to myself here. Eh? I'm like, I'm speaking to people to think that you know, we ain't all coming here white and white. I don't know about you. I had to be smashed to pieces to come in by him. I didn't come in there on my own brimming. The Lord wanted me here to do his work. Smash me to pieces. But I knew he was with me whilst he was smashing me. But I had a hard heart just like these people. I didn't want to let go. Until the time was right. And I didn't know when that was. And six and a half years later, here I am. So this is necessary. They don't realize they're sinners. Nor think that their sin is really so bad. It's not that bad. I'm only doing that. I'm only doing this. I'm only doing that. They don't think about it. They do not feel any great need for a saviour. When they see that God hates sin, yeah, when they see that God hates sin, and that's why we need to preach it, we can't wrap it up in molecules about God's grace and God's love. We know all that. And he's going to eventually do it. Yeah, we know that as well. But God hates sin. Let's, let's, let's correct it. Let's eradicate it. Sorry. He hates it. It grieves his spirit. How many of us sin today? I have. Stress, all these things lead. I've got to go and repent tonight. It's crashing at the door. <sighs> when they see that God hates sin and will punish it, and they are really glad to accept Christ as their own. I know that God is going to He's going to do a work in each and every single one of us. He's doing a work in us right now. I've seen people growing on this platform over the last 12 months. And I see them going through circumstances, situations, trusting in the Lord pressing on pressing in and i'm seeing some new creatures that i really want to you know don't want to be in the trenches with i've built up with some really good friendships with people like shah Gemma, costas i've known for all my recovery from from a couple of months clean We've grown up in the faith. We've grown up in on, on the same journey, on the same paths. Look at us there six and a half years later. He's, he's probably just about a few months earlier than me. Do you know what I mean? And we're in a Bible study together. Look how good God is. God's grace is sufficient for each and every single one of us. I spent the, 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 the weekend with Leon, Leon O. I didn't end up killing him. That is gracious. <laughs> Bless him. <laughs> Glory to God, man. <laughs> we look forward to Gemma Hill this weekend. <laughs> oh, bless her as well. So, I, man, man, I love this. Because God is doing the work with us brothers and sisters he's doing a mighty work far from accepting this however the jews became so mad they came they mad 
that what do they do? We see that phrase again, they gnashed at their teeth. The last time they gnashed at their teeth was when Jesus was in the Sanhedrin and they wanted to kill him. They wanted to kill Jesus. They eventually did. Here we see again, they gnashed at their teeth. Then God gave Stephen a vision. Look at this. This is powerful. So as they gnashed at their teeth, God gave Stephen a vision of heaven. And there was Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Can you imagine that? He knows he's just about to be stoned to death. Watch what happens in this. That, that God gives him a vision. That he now sees Jesus as he's just done this peach. He knows they're going to kill him. And he now sees Jesus seated at the right hand of the Father. And when the people heard this, they let out a great cry. Dragged poor Stephen out of the city. And they threw huge stones at him until he died. But before he died, as the Lord Jesus had done, in Luke 23, 34, he prayed that God would forgive them. Falling asleep for a believer is another way of saying that he died. Stephen was the first one to die for Jesus. But since then, many thousands have done so. The question is, and the question I'm putting to each and every single one of you, are you ready to die for him if necessary? If so, will you be willing to live for him every day? This is a question. Another way I answer this question right now, I answer this question but if I was to come into your front door right now and point a gun to your head and tell you to deny your faith, to save your life, would you do it? It's a very challenging question. It's a very challenging question. Because that's what's happening around the world today. And many people are dying for their faith. We need to be aware of that. Question, comments before we close. Anybody want to come in? Gemma Hill, well done, Gemma. Good to come in. Yeah, you know what's interesting, like going back to verse 42, you know, as uh, it says about, you know, that the, the, the children of Israel began to serve other gods like idols um and we know with the children of israel it was like they they intermingle too much with the culture around them and it's just like a stark warning for us although we're in the world we're not to be off the world that's why it's so important that and um, we're to love unbelievers but we're not to like if you hang around too much you know in the company or you start to adopt you easily your heart can become hardened these things start to pull us away from God. That's why I'm learning, like, you know, have to be in that word of God daily. We have to keep that relationship with God first because these things easily creep in. Um, you know, it was saying Mama. in verse 42, um, you know, they start to start, serve the stars of heaven. You know, it's only really been recently as a Christian, I've been walking with God since 2016. You know, like people, no, most people will say, oh, what star sign are you? I always used to say what my star sign, but even now I've started to get bothered and say, no, no, I don't believe in star signs, you know, and even that like offends people, you know, but just really understanding like, you know, just by going along with things, um, you know, we're not standing out, we're not being different. Um, and also, uh, what else? Um, yeah, you know, it's God that actually hardens the heart. So the more we resist the Holy Spirit, we wondered why, we wonder why, you know, how can they be so hard hearted? But the scary thing is, it's actually God that can harden the heart. The more we resist, the more he can actually blind our eyes the more we turn away because it says god god left them he abandoned them so the more we um oh, what's that saying it's like if you're um if you're more lenient on the little sins 
then you'll be more lenient on the biggest sins. So we really need to, I don't know, I can't, I can't remember the exact word, but basically, yeah, if I'm, for example, not controlling my tongue and I think, oh, it's all right, you know, I'm around unbelievers, they're swearing and that sometimes, you know, you, you want to sound a bit like them. So you swear and you think, oh, that's all right. I'm not quite, you know, I, I'm still growing. But even things like that, I'm just noticing now, you know, I need to, I need my conduct to look different. I need to, I'm not trying to fake it till I make it, but these are things that I need to keep relying on the spirit for. Um, and, you know, even Paul, he was able to, because he was so led by the Holy Spirit, God could really use him. And that's why they were so mad and they stoned him. Um, but yeah, he, it just goes to show, isn't it? Like if you're so full of the Holy Spirit, just um, how God can use you. And actually um, we may stand for truth and righteousness and be viciously persecuted or we're not going to necessarily be stoned to death. But for example, like, maybe like it just was coming up for me today I was like god you know I really want to be bold for you there's a wisdom for example NA meetings it's like I'm so burdened by people that are spiritually lost but at the same time I find myself sometimes a little bit stifled because there is that fear there is that fear of being outed or ridiculed and sometimes I think oh am I am I emotionally in a place to receive that but at the same time I have this burden that why should I shy away from my faith but there's a wisdom and a way that if I'd be led by the spirit and not on my own zealous zeal sometimes like God will lead me but I have to just be keep surrendered to surrendering to him in my spirit to see how he wants to lead me how he wants to use me but I just felt like I was just really pondering on this today I was like do you know what I just need to develop that deeper relationship with the Holy Spirit like start to make that time to just sit before him and really get to discern his voice because um yeah this this is key to our to the walk with God and um it's so easy to like get caught up in things that we think is religious activity and stuff but we're not really cultivating that time for that real relationship and it's just a burden that I've really felt on my heart today with my own personal walk um and yeah the fact that the fact that Stephen was able to you know say forgive them you know it's because I'm reading that book that I found in the park what God led me to about the 40 day spiritual journey and I was just like even like the resentments the unforgiveness things that just seem so petty do you know what I mean this side of eternity things that we struggle to let go of and um and you know it, it really is so it really doesn't matter does it like when we stand before God and um he's going to be you know going through everything we've said and done everything we say and do in our body and through our speech will be judged on judgment day and it's just really like started to convict me today of like controlling the tongue more and just yeah stop with the pettiness like and just God's got so much planned for us that sometimes we can just let these pe the pettiness of things in our character like really hold us back from the, the bigger call on our lives yeah. maybe it's time to do that step six you're on <laughs> yeah that as well <laughs> you've been on for three like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I know I was really pondering that some of it just seems so blessed <laughs> Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> <Come with me. laughs> God bless. <laughs> well, I think got something to do with that, but we we'll leave you there. Yeah. <laughs> we we'll leave you there. <laughs> All right, let's just pray before we go. Gemma, do you want to close that in prayer? Come on. Close that in prayer. Yeah. Yeah, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, Father, Lord, we just thank you so much, Father, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, Father, God, that you've called each and every one of us, Father, Lord. What a privilege and an honour, Father, God, to be handpicked, to be chosen, to be called for such a time as this, Father, God. I pray, Father, God, that we would not be like those children of Israel that wander in the wilderness for 40 years. But, Lord, you know, you've, you've already confirmed your side of the bargain, which is that you are faithful 
that you are true, that you have blessings for us, that you have generational blessings, that you want to take us to the promised land, Father God. And I pray that we would uphold our part of the bargain, Lord, which is to live a surrendered life to you, Father God, to trust you, Father God. And I just pray, Father God, that as we continue to study the word tonight, that the word will go forth into our hearts and it will change us outwardly, Father God. We will not just you know, be like that man that looks in the mirror and um, just does ignores what what he sees and walks away. That Lord, we, your word will change us. Lord, we just pray that we would desire a deeper, intimate relationship with you, Father God, to really, you know, put you first and really get to know you, Lord on a deeper level that we would rearrange our busy schedules sometimes to put you first father god to make sure that you come first in everything because sometimes it's so easy to get caught up in the day-to-day -day business of our life that we forget that the fact that the mere fact that we've woken up and opened our eyes because you're still breathing your life in us father god and how easy it is to just even go through the day without even being grateful or giving you glory father god and lord we just pray father god that you would just use us as your vessels father god to step out in boldness father god that lord just keep us bound together in love and unity looking out for each other father god praying for each other father god and that lord we would have that boldness like stephen father god that lord that we'd be willing to lay down our lives for the gospel because the call of following jesus it says it will cost us everything father god and i pray lord that we will not be like many of the people, Lord, in the Bible that, you know, was half-hearted and um, they were unfaithful, Father God, and they had to learn the hard way. I pray, Lord, that we would just learn to be obedient and surrender and it will save us so much wasted time and pain and misery, Father God. But I pray that we would just have that reverent fear of you, Father God. I pray that we will have that, that deep reverential fear, Father God. And that, you know, we will learn from consequences of our actions, Father God, that we'll be able to be open and honest in areas that we're struggling with, Father God. And then um, just pray for that wisdom and that discernment, Father God, to how to bring your message of truth and love to this dying world. But be prepared to know that we will face rejection and persecution. But by the depth of our relationship with you, we will be able to withstand these things that come against us, Father Lord. So I just pray this for each and every one of us. And we give you glory, Lord, in your mighty and precious name. Amen. Amen. Just to remind amen, you, amen. Amen. Just to remind you guys tomorrow night, uh, tomorrow 2.30, uh, women's small group and men's group at 6.30. If you're a man or woman, 2.30, small group, same ID. 6.30, men's group, same ID. Uh, we're in the book of... Um, James, the book of James, guys, I'm not sure about the women at 2.30. James, you know what, what book they're in? And you've got the 8 p.m. meeting as well um, for the women. That's also, uh, they've, they've managed to get an afternoon one and an evening one. Sorry, the 2.30 one, yeah, where they was in the book of Mark. Book of Mark. And 8 p.m.? I don't know what Chloe's been teaching, sorry. I think it might be Luke. Gospels. So they're in the Gospels. When we're Luke. in the book of James in the, in the guys. Luke, so mm. listen, guys. It's Luke, yeah. Luke. Mm. So if we um can sort um get involved with the word of God, do you know what I mean? Break bread with each other. That'd be fantastic. Step eight on Wednesday. Women's new series starts on Wednesday evening. They've got a new series. Looks quite quite attractive, actually. Um, so I don't go have a look. I'll tell you what it is. Gemma. So if you know um, any women that would like to join a new group, it's about the Faith Life series. You know, so maybe your, your, your partners or your wives or your friends or your, <laughs> your daughters or your, your daughter's <laughs> friends or, you know, your church. You want to do something on a Wednesday night. The first one is about the foundation for life, week one. Week two is about stress busters. Week three is about responding to the shout. And week four is about finding true contentment. And these women are going in series, man. So it'd be good to get involved in, in what they're doing. And if you've got maybe a partner or you know some women who want to get involved in Bible study, man, pass on the flyer. I'm going to put it in the groups. I'm going to put it in the group. Send it out. You know, our great commission is to, is to go out and reach the loss. And I know at least you guys must have 20, 30 people in your WhatsApps, maybe 50. I've got a couple of hundred. 
Send him out, man, in faith. We ain't even got to do walking now, Dave. All we've got to do is send a picture out. Uh, hallelujah. And we look forward to seeing you guys on Friday. Some of you on Friday come down to um, the prophetic evening. So God bless you and keep you. May he shine his face upon you. Good to see you, Connor. Hope you got your word yesterday as well. God bless you, brother. And uh, Maxine, I'm going to call you straight after. Gemma, God bless you. I'm still waiting for your last three. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, you're hiding from me. It's all right. You can't hide on Friday. Can you hide till Friday? <laughs> God bless you, Malcolm. Uh, I'll see you for half of the Bible study. I've got parents evening meeting at seven o'clock, so I'll be there for the first half hour. God bless you all, and uh, I'll let you in. Take care. God bless you. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye guys.